Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Hokey, a solitaire fortune telling experience where you're going to be playing as a pupil and attempting to become a seer. You're going to be using different types of decks. So you have like the looking deck and the pupil deck, and you'll start off with one of them and you're going to set it up based on the rules. And actually how this works is kind of interesting because you're going to have multiple different books in the game that you're going to open up, read the instructions, read the story, and determine how to play. And every time you experience this game, the experience can change a little bit. And sometimes you're going to have to go through the deck more than once and trying to complete the game more than once and change things about not only you, but the deck itself. We're going to get into the game, explain how to play, and of course, uh, how to set it up. And finally, my review for the game, Hokey, the storytelling, story building experience with a solitaire aspect. Beginning step includes taking out the Hokey book and opening up and reading the first portion of it. It's going to be chapter one, Pupil. You'll go through the story and then it will tell you whenever to stop or whether to keep reading. And when it says to stop, usually it'll have you go to the other book, the method book. You're gonna open it up and read it and it'll explain the setup for the game. And you'll go through that to understand it. And I'm gonna explain the first beginning setup. I don't wanna give up too much away, but basically uh, you're gonna be dealing with a seer and she's going to be trying to help you become uh, more than just a pupil. You're gonna be shuffling this deck of cards here from the pupil deck. You're going to be dealing out three cards for the woman's hand, the woman who's teaching you, and then you'll be dealing out six cards in a row of three. After you deal out your six cards, you're then going to go ahead and deal yourself out three cards as well. And this is going to be the discard pile. You can go ahead and turn this face up. So you should have a set of three cards, a set of six, six, and six cards, and then a set of three face up cards making your discard pile, which should look kind of like a cross. After you've got this set up, then you can begin the game. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but the setup continues as the story progresses, changing the way the game plays. But more on that in my review. Let's go ahead and talk about how to play. Beginning the game Hokey involves you taking out this portion of the deck and flipping each of them over. So you're going to have the six, six, and six flip over the top cards. After you have done that, and this row is called the Mirage, you're then going to begin playing the game. You want to clear the field. And how you clear the field? Well, there's two ways. Either A, you can remove both cards or all cards of the same symbol, or one of the cards in a pair of the same color. And so in this case here, I have two cards with the same symbol, and thusly I can have both of them become discarded. Now in the deck, there's only going to be one a type of card of each color. So you're going to be looking, and you can go ahead and check too, in this booklet here, that there are three colors. You can have red, blue, and black. And symbols are eight symbols. So you're gonna have eight times three, 24 different cards in the deck. And as you clear them, they can't come back. Thus, you have to be careful what you clear and how you clear. So then you can go ahead and flip over the cards. You're always gonna flip over cards before you do anything else. After you've flipped, you'll once again check. If you do not have any symbols or any matching colors, then you can choose to shift. You can shift any card from any top of any portion of either de any of the decks to any of the other decks. So I could take this black card and I can move it to another side and thusly placing it on top of another face-up card and opening up another card that will hopefully allow me to remove cards. And as you can see, now I have two symbols again, and I can remove both of those cards, and they can go into my discard pile. Discard piles, you can either kind of glump them up, but I suggest you keep them open so you can see all the cards in the discard to know what is left over in the deck and in the woman's hand to try and be able to clear the game. Flip over another card, and now we have an option. I can get rid of both cards of the same symbol, or because there are two red cards, I can go ahead and choose one of them and discard it into the discard pile, thusly flipping over another card. And that's pretty much how the game is going to work. You're gonna be moving cards when you can't play, removing cards based on whether there's the same symbol, or removing one of the two cards if they are the same color. And eventually what's going to happen is as you remove all the cards in the deck, there's only gonna be three cards remaining, or two cards remaining, I should say. In which case, you are going to have to reveal the woman's hand and from left to right, place down her cards. After you have done so, there's only going to be these cards remaining in the game. So 
Uh, you're only you can see all the cards, obviously, so you can kind of like look and see what's coming next. But you need, need to now clear, and you have to see how you can clear in the game. Well, I have two reds, so I can get rid of this one red, and then I can go ahead and uh, shift this card over, I believe. Um, I don't know if you can actually shift while you have things that you can remove. Uh, but either case, you have two same symbols, so you have to remove those ones here, there. And I'm stuck with a red and a black card, which means I didn't perform the game well enough. If I could have gotten rid of these last two into the discard pile, I would have won the game. And then what happens is I would go back in to the booklet and I would proceed reading with the story and see what happens next. And things will change in the game. But that's basically how to play the, the most basic variant of the game, Hokey, the solitaire fortune telling game. First and foremost, Hokey is a solitaire game. If you've played a game like solitaire, then you're going to understand how Hokey plays. It is different. It's not the same type of game as far as putting numbers on top of numbers and just kind of memorizing different spots and hoping that certain areas are going to pop up. But in certain instances, it is. This game has a lot to do with not only memory, but also being able to read the cards. And it sounds kind of strange, but it works really well with tarot, because in tarot you're going to be reading the cards and understanding past, present, and future, which has a tie, a link to this game, you might say. And it, it's also one of those things where it's like, if I have a certain number of colors in my discard with those certain symbols, you're going to know what cards are going to be remaining, but not exactly what spaces. And how you move cards and remove cards in this game will determine whether you're able to accomplish this goal or not. And the first few games that you play are going to be quite difficult. It's going to be a challenge to try and figure out how the deck works and how the memorization works and the process of elimination works that you'll probably have a difficult time, which is good because it allows for replayability. And thusly, as you continue playing, you start getting better, start understanding how it works and how you can read the cards. And then you'll move on to the next portions of the story, allowing for unique new twists and turns in the game. Uh, attracting the looking deck is going to activate the cards within and allow you to re start replacing cards from the pupil deck with looking cards. And you're going to have to start replacing and removing cards based on the last certain cards that you remove from the game or when you pull a gleam. And a gleam's really cool. It's when you have all three of the same symbol down below in, in a row. Then you can remove all those guys and you can start trading them with the looking deck. And thusly, you're trying to kind of convert the pupil deck into the looking deck. And then you're going to have a new set of cards. And the game doesn't end there. There starts to become more stories and more twists and turns that allow you to change the game up as you go along. And I don't have all of it. I do have a sneak peek though, but the idea of the game starts to change as well and makes this deck into something uh, quite interesting, quite familiar, but also a game with a nice twist to it. Now, this game here is a cool little solitaire game. I've actually never seen a solitaire game that kind of has a legacy type story building process that turns a game into something that's more of an experience slash game as you move along with how you play. And it starts easier and it starts getting more challenging and you have to start choosing and removing certain cards and it progresses slowly as you progress throughout the story and of course the different unique decks and experiences in the game. This is a lot of fun. The quality of the components is very nice. All the cards are really nice. You can tell the differences between the certain decks and how they work. One's got an eyeball and one's got an eyeball that's missing the pupil, as you would say. And then the sneak peek cards are even better looking. I'm not sure exactly how much I can talk about these cards, but I can say that the, the deck is very transformative and more artwork starts to appear. And the artwork in the game is really cool. And that's artwork that my wife really enjoys and has something to do with a game that she's been thinking about making just based on how cool and unique uh, this type and style of artwork is. That's a long time in the process though. Uh, the story building and telling experience is also really well weaved in with the process of what the game is trying to do and trying to get you to understand and I really appreciate how much time and effort and energy you can see put into this game as how it moves along. Um, I'm curious to see how much more is going to be added but here's pretty cool and unique and this is something that a lot of solitaire fans and fanatics I can already think of a few people that would be down to just flip down and start playing over and over again and the challenge is quite uh, <laughs> unique and something that they would love to experience overall a high quality cool unique solitaire game with a legacy slash story building experience that changes over time sign me up thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game hokey if you're interested in picking the game up there's a link down down below in the description where you can go ahead and prepare to get it or get it on Kickstarter. You can also go ahead and check out our website on filteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget, there is a 
subscribe button and the bell notification button to see more videos that we pump out every week, usually four to five videos every week, and of course our live stream on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. If you'd like to see more of this content, go ahead and check that out. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to looking into your future with you next time.